Hi guys, Miss Venable here bringing you a chemical reaction and today we are looking at double displacement. So I have two reactants here and both of them are aqueous solutions and we're going to take a look and uh, see what they look like. So this is Ki, that's potassium iodide and it is a clear liquid. So let me get some in my test tube and I'll show you what that looks like. Perfectly clear liquid. And I'm gonna squirt one squirt of that into my test tube there. And my other reactant is lead nitrate. So that is PB and it has two valence electrons. So it's a two plus charge and NO3, which is a one minus charge. And so when I crisscross, I have to put my parentheses around my nitrate there and the two on the outside. So this is lead nitrate. And again, it's just a clear liquid. So far, not so exciting. So here's what the lead nitrate looks like. Perfectly clear. But something really cool is going to happen. Watch the bottom of this test tube when I put the squirt in. Wow. That's a big color change, isn't it? Let me see if it feels warm. Nope, doesn't feel warm. Same temperature as before. So if I wait a little while, um, something pretty cool happens in this reaction, which is it looks right now like it's all liquid, like all of this looks like a liquid. I can kind of see little chunks of something there at the bottom. I don't quite know what that is, but by and large, it just looks liquid, kind of milky looking though, um, a little bit thick. If I wait a while, I'm going to find out that this is not actually all liquid. Um, actually, there is a solid product in here, and that solid product is going to sink to the bottom, and that is called the precipitate. And a lot of times in double displacement reactions, one of the products is actually insoluble in water. And insoluble means it does not dissolve, and so it's going to be forced to become a solid. And that solid will be more dense, and so it sinks to the bottom, and you can see it. And eventually, when all this yellow stuff settles, the top will be completely aqueous. We can actually predict which of these products is going to be solid and which of these products is going to be aqueous. And I'm going to teach you guys how to do that um, a little later on when we talk about solubility rules. Um, but for now, let's just balance this chemical equation. So I've got 1K, 1K, so that's balanced. Um, I've got 1I, and I've got 2Is, so that needs to be balanced. So let me go over here and add a 2 in front of my potassium iodide. Now that does mess up my Ks, right? My potassiums aren't right anymore, so I need to go over here and fix the Ks. Okay, let's check the lead. So I've got one lead and one lead, so that is balanced. And last but not least, let's check the ion nitrate. Now, nitrate NO3 is a polyatomic ion on page seven of your reference sheet, and we can balance it like it's one thing. So here I see this two, that means two nitrates, and over here, I just have NO3, so I just have one nitrate. So I did put a two out front, which makes two nitrates. So the nitrate is actually balanced. If you have the same polyatomic ion on both sides of your equation, um, you don't actually have to balance what's in it. You can just balance it as if it were an ion. Okay, that's been my double displacement reaction. Thanks for joining me.